Obviously, it's cold. It's late fall, and we're out here chasing basin crappies around. And really what this means, it's an electronics game. And they pop super well on my side imaging on that soft bottom there. Look at all those huge, huge school of them. Just gonna do that, drop a waypoint. Really what those waypoints do is just give me a general area of where these fish are at. Then I can come up front here, drop my live sight out, down, and I drive around until I find them, which you can see a few right here. I got a couple 20 feet out. They're kind of tucked to the bottom, but we're gonna see if we can get one to bite here. So I'm just gonna drop right on them. There we go. Just dead sticking it right over that school. And look at that. Nice one. And I'll show you here what I got on this blade bait because this is a, a pretty big bait. I like to throw a net on them because water's cold. Don't want to get my hands cold, but if you can see there, I got them on my trailer hook. This is a this is a bass size bait, right? And you can see that little blade on there. And what I did is I just threw that mustad uh, neko hook. I'm gonna get him back. It's a mustad neko hook that I just slid on the split ring with that little blade, because what they'll do is they'll come up and they'll nip at that blade. That bigger profile bait attracts them, and then they come up and nip at that blade, and you stick them a lot of times on that back trailer hook. And you can see how I have that hook positioned on there. I have it with the point facing out away from that blade, so it's a little bit more exposed, because if you put it on there the other way, the hook point would be could potentially be covered by that blade. So after driving around a lot, drop quite a few waypoints, and then really I'm just gonna keep continue to make circles throughout those waypoints. If I get off the fish or if I lose them, I'm just gonna drive around on the trolling motor, spinning that head around, looking on my graph, waiting to find the, the biggest school possible because you're really wanting to get that competition between fish. When it's this cold, it can be tough to get them to bite. So to put your odds in your own favor, you wanna find as many as possible because that competition really, really can get them going. So that's a pretty good school of crappies there. And I'm just simply, you know, this blade bait's heavy. It gets down to them fast. There we go, got him. You just gotta feather it right in there. And it, sometimes it just takes time. And being able to stay over the top of them with this transducer is just crazy. You really can't do it any other way. And this is a pretty good one, I think. I'm probably gonna put a net on him just to keep my, my hands dry. Yeah, it's a nice crappie. And here you go. I didn't get him with the trailer hook on that one, but he ate the head of it. You can see it right there. So let him go. So really it comes down to basin crappie fishing like we're doing today. It's really an electronics game. Using your electronics to the fullest, driving around side imaging, and then getting up front here with this live sight and just staying on top of them and putting your bait right in the strike zone. You can see how long I worked that last fish. And I would have never known that there was even fish interested in my bait had I not been able to see, see them on the screen. So this fish didn't go back down, brought him up from the basin. So I'm just gonna net him. With this rubber net, it's nice. It doesn't absorb water, so it doesn't freeze up. Real good for the fish. But one thing I do is just give him a little drop, and you see how he just kind of woke back up? Take it, give him a good release, and away he goes. I don't know what the deal is with it, but you give him a little drop like that, and I know it's not necessarily the best, you know, you're taking fish slime off, but for whatever reason, it, it just like wakes him back up. And I don't know, they just, take right, right off back down to the bottom and healthy release. You know, it is cold. The water temps are in the low 40s. It's the end of the season. It's really, you can really call it extreme weather, but you can still get out here and catch them. One thing to really think about when you're fishing in extreme conditions like this, really safety. And then part of that is making sure that your outboard is operational so what's really awesome with having a mercury is you can have everything on your phone so if anything happens in the cold whether the lower unit freezes up the motors overheating any of that kind of stuff you can stay on top of it and then you know obviously staying dressed for the <laughs> the cold weather i mean hand warmers hats 
we've got our ice suits on and these suits in particular are actually float suits i mean you fall into this water at this temperature and you're not going to last long so having that float suit is really nice just gives you a little bit of peace of mind as you're as you're fishing at least it does for me because it's not something you really want to mess around with i mean yeah it's cold but we're we're perfectly comfortable and out here catching fish there we go got him just hovering it right above him and this was actually an individual fish that i could see he was real interested so i just hovered it right above him and got him to come up and whack it another net on him another decent one you know these aren't huge crappies by any means but you can see they're more than willing to commit to a big big bait like that especially with that little teaser blade on there and I mean they're getting some of them are getting that front treble even just like that when you bring them up from the basin like that sometimes they just don't want to go back down but that little drop just for whatever reason wakes them back up and they release really well with using this upsized bait this really is a bass bait bass size bait I'm, I'm using a bass rod you know this is Dio, the Dio Tatula Elite hair jig rod so I wouldn't necessarily fish this bait for bass on this rod but this rod has such a nice soft tip that it pairs really well for crappies you know I don't dump a lot of fish and it handles this bigger half ounce bait really well and I've just got that paired up with a, a good 10 pound Seaguar braid I like that braid because it's cuts the water real well it sinks fast with a big reel you know it's it's really a bass setup an awesome bass setup I can make those casts and then I've got a little shanka of it's actually mono a six pound mono for a little shock absorption because you know those crappies mouths are so paper soft so using that stretch of mono for visibility and for you know not losing the fish Not a giant, but you know, just really all comes down to utilizing your electronics because this basin crappie deal late in the fall, it's all about electronics and staying efficient. <laughs>